Hello, I'm Vicki Bellino and I have a pattern company called Bloom Creek and I'm also the designer of the Symphony and Rhapsody quilt that's featured in the winter catalog and I thought what I'd do today is give a quick demonstration on how to make the Dresden plate that is the center of your quilt. So there are a few different methods. I'm going to show you a little bit of each method and then you can decide which way you like best. Uh, the first would be uh, to use the typical needle and thread basting. What you're going to do is take your individual blade from your pre-cut papers, place it onto your fabric, and cut the fabric about a generous quarter inch all around. You can have a scant at the bottom because we're not going to finish off this bottom edge down here, but the rest of it a nice quarter inch. Now to keep it in place while you're basting, you can either use a straight pin or what I've now decided to do is just a quick swipe of the glue pen, place it on your fabric and it will hold it in place nicely for you while you're basting. Sometimes if you don't do that, by the time you get around to the opposite side, you hardly have any fabric to turn over your paper. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the bottom long straight edge, not the end of your thread, and come in from the right side so that when you pull your needle, You've got a nut that's on the outside. This makes it easier to remove your basting. Just fold your seam allowance tightly over the paper. Big basting stitches down the side until you get to the top point. When you get to the top point, you're just going to simply fold that over as well. Make sure you take a stitch right through the corner where it's folded and then another big stitch right up to the point. Then fold that seam over as well. Take another stitch right at the fold. And then continue until you get to the bottom of the long edge. Leaving the short edge raw at the bottom. So you would end up with a little bit of raw edge down there, which isn't going to matter because it's going to be covered when it's finished. You'll cover it with a circle. So that's needle and thread basting. Now I'm going to show you, many people like using the glue pen, such as the Fonz and Porter glue pen, and it rolls up and you just need to use a little bit. Same thing with your fabric, about a quarter inch all the way around. You can do a little swipe on the back of the paper to hold it in place. Now starting at the bottom, you're going to just do a light swipe, it does not have to be a lot, and then just fold your seam allowance over and it holds it right in place. This is water soluble and the papers will come out just like with needle and thread basting. So it's the same principle as your needle and thread basting as far as folding over your seam allowances. It's much faster. The only thing is, there's, as with any technique, there's pros and cons. When I'm finished and I go to take out my paper pieces, when I press it first, which I like to do if I'm going to applique a Dresden plate to a block, I like to press it very well before I remove my paper so that my outside points stay nice and crisp. When you use the glue pen and when you iron, when you press it first, sometimes it makes getting the papers out a little more difficult but try it and see what you think. I'll show you uh, in just a moment. So that we've got one that's basted. This is glue basted. Now the way I like to do it is a combination of both. So what I will do is I will glue baste the sides, the long sides. This way when I go to take out my papers, when I show you this way, you'll see uh, the papers come right out and my points will be real nice. So I'm just going to glue base the two long sides like this. Just a little swipe. Remember, don't use too much of it. It's going to make getting your papers out harder. So now I'm left with the point. All right, so now what I'm going to do is just finish off my points with the needle and thread basting method, which just takes a second and a couple big stitches. And I just find that when it's all whip stitched together. My points stay nice and crisp when I take my papers out and it only takes me a second to do this. 
All right, so those are the three techniques for basting. Now we're going to whip stitch together. And regardless of the size of your Dresden plate, uh, it's the same thing. You're going to baste your blades and then you're going to whip stitch your blades together. So for this particular quilt, I used four different reds. So I'm going to alternate each one of the red prints and then I'm going to whip stitch them together all around in a circle. So you start by taking your first two and with right sides together, align your points at the top and work from the top towards the inside. So you're going to use thread that matches your fabric closely and you're just going to come in right at the points. Go right through the fold and then I like to do my stitches close together. I find that that doesn't show so much on the other side. So you're just going to go right through the folds of both pieces and you, you, you shouldn't be going through your paper. You'll be able to feel that it's just going through the fabric and just continue all the way down. This is called whip stitching. I like using a number seven sharps needle for the whip stitching and I find that using regular weight machine piecing thread like 40 weight cotton that's my my preference. It's a little bit sturdier doesn't seem to show as much on the outside. When you get the two pieces whip stitched you're going to go all the way down to the bottom. Okay, this is an example of what it looks like when you get down to the bottom. You'll be able to feel where the paper stops at the bottom and just take your whip stitch to there. Then you're going to open it up and then what you'll do is you'll add your next blade. Do the same thing. Continue to the bottom, fold it, and then continue by just adding your blades. It'll take 16 blades to make one Dresden plate. Once you get to your last one, now this is an example of the plate already sewn together, but when you get to the last and you're adding your 16th one, what you're going to do basically essentially is fold the Dresden plate in half and then you're just going to whip stitch the first and the last blades together so that when you open it up you have your Dresden plate. And you'll notice how it might not lay flat. Don't worry. Once the papers come out and you've pressed it, it'll lay nice and flat. Your center circle will cover the raw edges. So a lot of people ask me, well, how hard is it to get the papers out? And it's very easy. All you're going to do, I have pressed this around the outside so that my top points are nice and crisp for appliqueing. So what you're going to do, if you've uh, needle and thread basted, you just come in at the stitch next to your knot and you just start pulling out the threads because you should have big basting stitches that makes it to come easier to come out. Use a, a thread that contrasts with your fabric and you'll find that it's easier. So then once you've done that you just come over on the other side and your paper piece will come right out and you're left with a nice point. Same idea if you've glue basted your entire blade such as this one right here you come back on the side and just start peeling back your seam allowance and it it'll come out when you get to the point though be a little bit more careful you're going to have to peel it back with a nail because we've pressed it so it tends to stick a little bit more but you still should be left on the front with your nice point that lays nice and flat and then for the method I did where I glue basted these two long sides, then I ha just have to come back here and pull out those two stitches and it's finished. Gently peel back your seam allowance. Remember I glue basted this, which is why it's sticking a little bit more. And your paper pieces can be reused. Now I will say that when you use the glue stick method for basting, I use the papers maybe two times, whereas if I needle and thread based, I can do them three, four times maybe. So it's just a preference. And remember, less is more with the glue pen. It'll make it easier for getting your, your papers out at the end. So once you've taken all of your papers out, press it again real nicely, center it on your fabric, and then either by machine or by hand, stitch it to your block. 
and that's making a Dresden plate. Very simple and very fun.